All right, chip of the day. Chip of the day is a TL494 pulse width modulation control circuit. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, you can use them for all sorts of things like uh, microwave ovens or <laughs> server power supplies or e-bikes or smoke detectors. I don't know, kind of weird list of weird list of uh, things you can use them for. Anyway, what is it? It is basically a controller for switch mode power supplies. Uh, that's more likely what's going on here. Uh, let's take a look at a, uh, at a, uh, oh, let's take a close look at the uh, lock diagram here first. All right, so what's inside? Uh, you've got a, uh, an oscillator, and the oscillator goes into an op amp. So uh, then it goes into a control with some, uh, Control FETs or uh, transistors. There's a voltage reference and there's a couple comparators. Kind of a weird little chip, but if you put it in a circuit, it makes more sense. So let's uh, let's look at that in a circuit. So here is a circuit. Can we see the whole thing here? Yeah, just like that. All right. So this is a 32 volt input, and then we're going to have some output here. Um, it says it's going to create a five volt output at 10 amps. All right. And it's going to do that with this big pass transistor and its helper transistor. Uh, get the uh, HFE high enough. Um, there's a load. Uh, we're going to monitor the voltage with this uh, divider here. Um, and so we're going to uh, divide the output by half and feed that back around. And then we're going to uh, monitor the current with a 0.1 ohm resistor. So if you have one volt across 0.1 ohms, if you have uh, uh, 10 amps across 0.1 ohms, that gives you one volt. So ideally we have one volt here and two and a half volts here to make the thing happy. Uh, you're going to do that with these two comparators. One comparator is going to be you, this comparator here is, is going to be used to take a look at that one volt current. And this comparator here is going to be taking a look at that two and a half volts uh, uh, voltage. So this is your voltage compliance and your current compliance and they're ORed together. And so you're going to take an internal reference, the ref, the ref can takes it to five volts. So whatever input you have, it converts it to five volts V reference. Um, we use a 1K and a 4K to generate one volt here. And then we use a 5K and a 5K to generate 2.5 volts here. And that's the way this is going to work. If it's um, more than a volt, shut it down. If it's more than 2.5 volts, shut it down. And we're going to do that by um, using that information with this control circuit. And this thing is going to be doing pulse width modulation. And uh, you need to whack these things on more if you need more voltage and whack them on and off less if you need less voltage. Uh, that's the way the uh, circuit's going to work. Let's take a look at some waveforms. Okay, so we have our oscillator running and it creates a, uh, a sawtooth wave. And um, then we can have uh, some reference voltage and we get this... Uh, uh, pulse width depending on the voltage level. If you're up at the top, it's a narrow pulse width. If you're at the bottom, it's, it, it changes the pulse width, right? All right, so uh, this is a reference schematic out of the data sheet. I, I have uh, a power supply here that uses a uh, TL494 chip, but I don't have the schematic for this power supply. So we'll assume it's kind of like that other power supply. So let's talk about the switcher here that we have. Um, this is out of a printer that I found in the, in the street. <laughs> um, anyway, the voltage comes in here. There's a fuse on one side. There's a filter capacitor on, the, on that. And a uh, common mode choke with two capacitors on each leg. And then uh, a spot for another one of these. If you could afford it, you could put another one of these here. <laughs> they just jumpered it out. Um, so yeah, it was first first designed to have two of these chokes, but they decided they didn't need them. So they left off the second one, just put in some jumper wires and they got rid of the second uh, capacitor as well. 
goes into a um, bridge rectifier, so you rectify the 120 volts coming into this thing. And there is a surf start, soft startup uh, RTC here. Uh, uh, RTC, 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 yeah, these uh, thermal thermal resistors, so it has a soft soft start when it turns on. Um, it gets rectified with this bridge rectifier in this big capacitor here. Uh, this is a big FET that switches on and off, wacka wacka wacka. And then it goes through a, a pulse transformer and then it goes to the output. And this is uh, the uh, diode on the other side. Uh, this this diode here, you need a, a diode and an inductor. This, this circuit's gonna be a little bit different, but it, basically this is the diode that's used. And then that voltage gets put across these capacitors here. These are in parallel and then it goes out. And the general gist of this power supply is it gives you 35 volts. So if between the black wire and the yellow wire, you get 35 volts and then they needed five volts as well. So there's a second supply in here that gives you your five volts that's on, the, on the red wire. I added those, this, is, this little connector here was the way they were normally used, but I, I added these wires just so we can play with this thing on the bench. So let's, uh, yeah, let's hook it up. All right, so I brought in some voltage here and let's monitor what comes out. Let me turn things on and we get uh, 35 volts, uh, 35 volts out of this thing. So that looks good. And then on the other, on the red wire, we get, uh, we get five volts. So that's the way this thing works. All right, so let's uh, hook up a couple other things. All right, so let me hook up a dummy load here to 35 volt side. Look that on there. And uh, we will hook up, uh, let's see here. We have, uh, turn this thing on. And I know you can't see that because it's too small, but we will have uh, Let's set this thing to one amp. All right, so we have this set to one amp. Let me turn the power supply back on and I will turn this on. And there we go, we've got one amp and we have 35.6 volts uh, coming out of this thing. 35 watts of power. A little fan on this thing is going. So let's take a look at uh, our chip here and see what's going on. Let's go ahead and turn this off. And uh, I'm going to be using a uh, test clip here. This is from the old days. I guess they still make these. Um, but I have a collection of these made by AP Incorporated. Um, and it's a nice uh, spring clip with gold contacts, and you can just pop it right on top of your chip. So, right down there is our. Uh, is our TL494, so we will just grab a hold of that chip with this test socket here. There we go. And now we can just probe the uh, probe the pinups here. It pins up here, and uh, we'll be ready to go. Let's turn on the, turn on the oscilloscope. All right, there we go. So I have um, a oscilloscope probe on uh, the output transistor that tickles the uh, tickles the transistor. So we should see spikes there. Are things pulsing? Uh, I have it running at one amp. So let's take a look up here. We're using uh, channel one. We've got a gain times ten probe. And let's see here, two volts peak to peak, 10 volts, there we go. So it's 10, 20, 30, uh, 35 volts. And we get some spikes there. Oh, there we go, we can trigger on those. And so there's our, there's our negative going spike. And you can see that it's jittering around. That's the pulse width modulation that's being used to generate uh, accurate voltages. Um, so let's see here, can I, how do I do that? Show scale, no, more color grading. That's what I want, oh, there we go. So it should give us a little bit of color grading here as we, as we zoom in here. 
All right. And then if we zoom way out, we should see some extra pulses. Yeah, every once in a while we get some other pulses. And so it's this pulse width modulation thing. It's kind of hard to see on this, uh, on this particular chip, but uh, that's a pretty good picture of it there. So the way this uh, circuit works is um, this is a helper transistor. This is a PNP. So it's going to conduct and turn this guy on when you pull down on it. So it's these negative going pulses. These guys are on when, when this thing goes up, it lets loose. Okay. So that's why they have these, uh, have these negative going pulses, pulses here or when you're starting to turn that transistor on. Now, if I turn the, the, uh, load off you can see that the width went down a little bit let's zoom in a little bit so when i turn the when the turn the load on it's working harder and then when i turn the load off it's narrowed down a bit again it's kind of hard to see on this chip but uh, that's what it's doing all right well there you go chip of the day was a tl494 pulse width modulation control circuit